Hello everyone, I am Juwain from third year. Today I will be talking about the antiarrhythmic drugs. So today we will be discussing about the introduction. Introduction as in a small overview about the action potential, the classification of the drugs and as well as the mechanism of action, pharmacokinetics, uses and adverse effects. Now here in short I will tell you about the action potential. Phase 0 deals with the sodium influx and phase 3 deals with the potassium outflux. Phase 0 is the depolarization state and phase 3 is the repolarization state. There are some terms you need to understand. AP duration, it means the duration from the beginning of depolarization till the end of repolarization. So ERP, it includes phase 0, 1, 2 and some part of phase 3. Here, the sodium channels are inactive, whereas in QT interval, it is same as AP duration. It means the duration from the beginning of depolarization till the end of repolarization. And phase 0 corresponds to QRS complex, and whereas phase 3 corresponds to the T wave in the ECG. And here, this graph shows a graph of single ventricular myocyte whereas ECG shows of whole ventricle. Now let's talk about the classification of antiarrhythmic drugs. There are four classifications including one miscellaneous. In, cl in class 1 consists of sodium channel blockers. It has three subclasses class 1a, 1b and 1c. In class 2 it is a beta adrenergic blockers. Class 3 it is a potassium channel blockers and class 4 is a calcium channel blockers. Now we'll move on to the class 1 drugs. Class 1 has 3 subclasses. Class 1A, 1B, 1C. Now I will talk about the mechanism of action of all these classes now. Class 1A have moderate effect at blocking the sodium channels. And they also have moderate effect at blocking the potassium channels. It takes 1 to 10 seconds. So because of this potassium channel blo blocking properties, 1A drug increase the action potential duration and thus increase the effective refractive period. Coming to class 1B drugs, class 1B drugs have relatively weak effect at blocking the sodium channels, but their effect is most prominent in already depolarized tissues that can be seen in ischemia. It takes less than one second. So these drugs help in setting of angina or acute MI. When it comes to the action potential duration and the refractive period, 1B drug decrease them slightly. So the action potential looks like this. See here. With a very slightly decreased slope to the upstroke and mild shortening of the action potential. Examples are lidocaine and mixolytin. Class 1C drugs takes more than 1 to 10 seconds. They are relatively strong blockers of sodium channels and one of the two major 1C drugs is propafenon and has some beta blocking effects as well. Now it, if it has no effect on action potential duration and effective refractive period. So uh, action potential of a patient with 1C type of drug looks like this. See here. There is a markedly slow stroke but otherwise normal uh, action potential duration. 1C drugs are flicanide and as, as mentioned propafenone. Quinidine is the first antiarrhythmic drug used. In the 18th century, the bark of cinchona plant was used to treat rebellious palpitations. It has increased threshold of excitability, decreased automaticity and prolongs the AP duration. Coming to pharmacokinetics, it, has, it is well absorbed, 80% bond to plasma proteins and it has very extensive hepatic oxidative metabolism. It resembles 3-hydroxyquinidine. It is nearly as potent as quinidine in blocking the cardiac sodium channels and prolonging the cardiac action potential. Now coming to the uses of quinidine. It, it is used to maintain the sinus rhythm in patients with atrial flutter or atrial fibrillation. It is also used to prevent the recurrence of ventricular tachycardia or ventricular fibrillation. Okay, now let's come on to the quinidine adverse effects. I will categorize as non-cardiac and cardiac. In non-cardiac, we have diarrhea, thrombocytopenia, synchronism and skin rashes. In cardiac, we have marked QT interval prolongation and torsidis T pointers. What is TDP? 
It is a specific type of abnormal heart rhythm that can lead to sudden cardiac death. It is a polymorphic ventricular tachycardia that exhibits distinct characteristics in a ECG. And it also causes hypotension and tachycardia. Coming to the drug interactions, they are metabolized by cytochrome 450. They increase the redoxin levels. They also cause cardiac depression with beta blockers. It also inhibits the cytochrome 2D6. Coming to the next drug, disopyramide. It exerts electrophysiologic effects very similar to those of cunidine. So we can say it is better tolerated than cunidine. It also exerts prominent anticholinergic actions and also it has negative ionotropic actions. Coming to the adverse effects, it causes precipitation of glaucoma, yes. It has constipation, dry mouth and urinary retention. Procanamide is used for rate and rhythm control in pre-excited atrial fibrillation, particularly in patients with Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome developing atrial fibrillation. While most of the patients with atrial fibrillation are considered with beta blockers or CCB, other uses of procanamide are monomorphic ventricular tachycardia. Adverse effects is same like cunidine, the cardiac adverse effects such as hypotension, TDP, or prolonged QT. This table is a short overview of what we have discussed so far about the class 1 drugs. Have a look on this. Coming to class 1B drugs, class 1B drugs such as lignocaine, phenytoin and mixolytine, it blocks the sodium channels and also shortens the repolarization, right? And Okay, lignocaine blocks the inactivated sodium channels more than in the open state. It has relatively selective for partially depolarized cells. It is selectively acts on diseased myocardium. Remember in class 1B drugs, they are the only drugs in class 1 which relatively acts on diseased cells or tissues. It has rapid onset and also shorter duration of action. It is used in ventricular arrhythmias and also digitalis induced ventricular arrhythmias. Okay, why it is used in ventricular arrhythmias? So why not in atrial arrhythmias? It is because atrial action potentials are very short, are so short that the sodium channels in the inactivated state. So they can briefly compare with the diastolic recovery times, which are relatively long. So this lignocaine have very high first pass metabolism and this metabolism is dependent on the hepatic blood flow. Propanol decreases the half-life of lignocaine. And here is a dose uh, which should be given 50 to 100 mg bolus followed by 20 to 40 mg every 10 to 20 minutes IV infusion. Coming to the adverse effects of lignocaine, they are relatively safe in recommended doses. They cause side effects, CNS side effects in high doses such as drowsiness, disorientation, muscle twitching, blood vision, nystagmus, and rarely convulsion. They are least cardiotoxic antiarrhythmic. So here is a short overview of what we have discussed, a complete gist of information. It may help you. Just have a look. Now the next drug in class 1B drug, mexilitine. It is an oral analog of lignocaine. It has no first pass metabolism in liver. It is used in chronic treatment of ventricular arrhythmias associated with previous MI. And the tremor, I will tell you one thing, tremor is the early sign of maxillitin toxicity. It causes hypotension, bradycardia, widened QRS, dizziness and nystagmus. Now this tokenide is also structurally similar to lignocaine but can be administered orally also. Okay. But in lignocaine it is IV for ventricular arrhythmias in terms of cardiac. In this tokenide we can use orally too. It has serious non-cardiac side effects like pulmonary fibrosis, agranulocytosis, thrombocytopenia. So we have to limit, limit its use. Now coming to the class 1C drug, 
they are anganite flaconite and cupafenone they have a uh, markedly slow phase depolarization they have minimal effect on repolarization and are most potent sodium channel blockers the first drug of class 1c propafenone they are structurally similar to propanolol and has beta blocking actions okay undergoes variable first pass metabolism too they are the reserved drug for ventricular arrhythmias and reentrant tachycardia involving accessory pathway i will explain you about the reentrant tachycardia in the later slides after the classification is over and I'll, and the adverse effects are metallic taste constipation and it's also proarrhythmic proarrhythmic is a new or more frequent occurrence of pre existing arrhythmias okay now let's move on to the next drug of class 1c flaconide they are the potent blocker for sodium and potassium channels with slow unblocking kinetics remember it also blocks the potassium channels but doesn't prolong the pd and qt interval remember that graph yes and it also maintains the sinus rhythm in supraventricular arrhythmias now let's move to the graph where the class 2 drug is given and remember class 2 and class 4 deals with the slow response action potential whereas class 1 and 3 deals with the fast response action potential in class 2 this is the this is the phase 4 here you can see there is a decreased slope of phase 4 depolarization and here you can see there is a prolonged depolarization at av node now the uses of class 2 drugs in arrhythmias all the drugs have the same uses so i will i will uh, put in one slide it is used in controlling the supraventricular arrhythmia such as atrial flutter fibrillation and paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia it is also used to treat tachyarrhythmias caused by adrenergics such as hyperthyroidism pheochromocytoma and also during anesthesia with halothane it is also used in digitalis induced tachyarrhythmias it is used as prophylactic in post mis in ventricular arrhythmias in prolonged qt syndrome too particularly esmolol is used in arrhythmia associated with anesthesia like halothane and it also used in supraventricular tachycardia okay now we'll talk about the graph when class 3 drug is given can you see any change in phase 0 no phase 1 no phase 3 phase 2 no phase 3 yes why potassium outflux happens and therefore phase 3 changes right so it causes prolonged repolarization so action potential is affected if action potential is affected qt interval will increase right perfect and it also causes increased erp okay coming to the next drug amiodarone of the class 3 it is a very important drug and asked couple of times in the university exam it has iodine containing drug and it is a long acting the mechanism of action it prolongs the apd action potential by blocking the potassium channels in the phase 3 it also blocks the inactivated sodium channels it has beta blocking action too and also blocks the calcium channels it has decreased conduction and decreased ectopic automaticity now talking about the pharmacokinetics it has variable absorption 35 to 65% it has slow onset 2 days to several weeks it takes and the duration of action is weeks to months now talking about the uses it can be used for both supraventricular and the ventricular tachycardia the adverse effects they have cardiac effects pulmonary effects and git as well as some other effects too in cardiac we have heart block qt prolongation bradycardia hypotension and cardiac failure in pulmonary we have pneumonitis leading to pulmonary fibrosis it also has bluish discoloration of skin and corneal micro deposits and it has hyperoxidity also gid disturbances it also blocks the t4 conversion to t3 leading to hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism and there are some more drugs in class 3 brutalium sotalol and ibutilide or dofotilide 
in britelium it's a it is a adrenergic neuron blocker it is mainly used in resistant ventricular arrhythmias and sotalol is a beta blocker and uh, fertilide or ebutilide is a selective potassium channel blocker it may cause you qt prolongation they are mainly used in atrial fibrillation to convert the or maintain the sinus rhythm now coming to the newer class 3 drugs such as dronderon vernacal and azimilide and tadesamil so the last class of the antiarrhythmic class 4 deals with the slow response action potential as i mentioned class 4 increases the pr interval it also increases the erp can you see a slow rise of action potential phase 4 is here a slow rise of action potential and a prolonged repolarization at av node so calcium tum channel blocker such as verapamil it is used to terminate paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia it's also used to control the ventricular rate in atrial flutter or fibrillation the drug interactions never use digoxin because it displaces the digoxin from binding sites it also decreases the renal clearance of digoxin so talking about adenosine which is a miscellaneous drug it is a purine nucleoside it also have short and rapid action when given iv it suppresses the automaticity and av conduction and also dilates the coronaries it's a drug of choice for psvt in the upcoming slides i will show you the all the drug of choices for different type of arrhythmias the adverse effects are the nausea dyspnea flushing and headache so here is a graph when adenosine is given see it decreases the action potential duration and it also causes hyperpolarization so this adenosine acts on specific g protein coupled adenosine receptors it activates ach sensitive potassium channels in sa node av node and atrium so shortens apd hyperpolarization and decreased automaticity as we have uh, discussed earlier it inhibits the effects of increased cmp with sympathetic stimulations and thereby decrease the calcium currents and there are some more drugs under miscellaneous atropine digitalis and magnesium sulfate atropine is used in sinus bradycardia digitalis in atrial fibrillation and atrial flutter remember the interaction the drug interaction where digitalis cannot be used yes verapamil and magnesium sulfate digitalis induced arrhythmias so here is a drug of choices for different type of arrhythmias it may help you just have a look so as i told you i'll be talking about the reentrant phenomena so understand in terms svt svt means supra above the ventricle atrial fibrillation atrial flutter psvt and wolf parkinson white syndrome psvt and wpw are almost same now see this diagram over here impulse from the sa node sa node is over here av node is here as as impulse from the sa node is goes to the av node and then to the purgency fibers normally but at times sa node impulse goes to the accessory pathways and then to the and then goes like this so this uh, and then forming a short circuit type of thing and call, it is called as a reentrant phenomena this is the main reason which causes arrhythmias so that's it about the anti arrhythmic drugs thank you